For the last eight years, our school has not had to stand down, suspend or exclude any child. Now, that goes against all figures in New Zealand around stand downs and suspensions. Prior to our initiative and the things that we're doing, we would be common in many lower decile schools where truancy or non-attendance was a real issue within our school. It appears now that those things are things of the past. Well, for many years, our school was a, a classic uh, low decile school. It was perceived as an underachieving school uh, where truancy was high, where a large percent of our community moved around. These communities, with young parents, with parents who are doing their very best, need assistance. Because we know that what has happened in the past has not worked. Help us morning tea tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So instead of putting up boundaries around our school, we have a philosophy of taking away all those potential boundaries and creating opportunities that are going to enrich our, and nourish our families. It has cost us no more money than what the government give us for education. It's the bringing together of the community agencies that uh, work in our community, the parents as the first teachers, and the school and saying, let's do something that is not traditional, but is going to be different, to make it different for our young people. Mum. 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 We're not just a nine to three school. Our school literally opens at seven o'clock in the morning and closes at 10 o'clock at night. And the reason for that is that our focus is not just on uh, excellence and achievement for our students, but it's more around the nurturing of our family so when we enrol a child, we actually enrol the whole family. I've got four kids and I'm divorced. And I access Di's services through the school. I needed help from Di, just the kids, even though it was a while ago that we separated, they still had issues regarding it. We are able to be proactive around dealing with some of the issues that these young people have or families. And often they'll act out at school. We're able to acknowledge that and to put in some counselling or therapy or ways and they're able to resolve some of those issues for those young children rather than excluding them from school. Just knowing it was there, it wasn't at the previous school that they went to in Auckland and easily accessible. Victory School's always got lots of activities all the time and there's always something happening so it's not just come to school, learn your work and go home. Everyone helps out each other. It's a community minded school. I think it's made us have a better relationship, all of us. A large percentage of our community in the past used to run away from issues. Between 60 and 75 percent of our whole school role used to change over in one year. Well that's down to between 10 and 15 percent and that's quite remarkable. We have parents, instead of running away from issues, they've trusted the school, they've trusted the health professionals and those that are here to help to strengthen the family, and they developed a relationship that's allowed them to stay in our community. What we're going to do now is we're going to walk through our courtyard of our school and towards our community centre, the Victory Community Centre, which is literally only within 100 metres of the main offices of our school. What's innovative about this place is that it is on the education campus of Victory Primary School, so there's a good solid relationship about educational staff. But it's a community centre, so it's available to all ages. So we have children coming to play group. We have old people coming to sit and be fit class. We have people participating in our community garden. And then they find out that there's a diabetic nurse here, or that there's Plunkett, or that they need to see a midwife. So there's a range of different possibilities for anybody in this community to come and participate. What makes this unique, I think, is that the connection with the school 
and the connection with so many different agencies that come in and bring their services here. So not only does that make it really easy for the families in this area to connect with those services, but all the services get to know each other better. It's just a, a really good example of interconnectedness. We'd stuffed it up pretty badly. We had a matter of days, I think hours, it was a of hours <laughs> to find accommodation for um, us and our um, five children. And that's how we met Penny. When they came to us, we were able to put them into emergency housing and that also gave us time to pull together a strengthening families meeting. We needed work and income to be alongside us. We needed child, youth and family to be aware of, of their need, budget advice, the midwife to be with us, the school to support us. So bringing us all together, we were then able to draw up a plan. It was to to get help for the things we needed and to address them for the future so they didn't reoccur. We see the absolute positive benefits in our young people, their behaviour, their health, the engagement of our parents, the health of the parents, the way they talk more positively about their families. For those that might doubt, I think they need to examine their true belief of their investment in people. If it makes a difference to strengthen our families and to nurture them, it is worth doing it every single day.